Hi, my name is Kent Lee and I teach computer science at Luther College. In this video I'm going to show you a little bit about bottom-up design. Bottom-up design is a technique that can be used when you're writing programs that are a little more complicated than some of the programs we've been looking at so far. In this, uh, in this video I'm going to show you how to write a program that draws flowers on the screen. Um, and we're going to do some bottom-up design and part of bottom-up design is trying to decide what kinds of functions you might want to write to help you in drawing uh, flowers on the screen. And of course that would take some knowledge of what a flower should look like. I'm thinking that a flower would have some number of petals um, around a center to it and uh, um, those petals are each going to have some some color associated with them eventually, but they will have some kind of an elliptical shape that uh, that we'd want to uh, to draw. So I have here some functions that might be of some use in doing that because converting uh, from polar coordinates to uh, x and y coordinates might be useful in in drawing uh, petals on the screen, given some of my knowledge of. Uh, of how I might do this with mathematics. So I'm gonna, I've am gonna. i got a, a few functions here and this two radians is another function that would convert degrees to radians and I may or may not need that but I'll go ahead and leave it there for now. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and start to write a, uh, a draw petal uh, function for myself. Now if I'm drawing something on the screen I need a, a parameter T, the, the turtle probably, to, uh, to draw it with. And I want to draw it at an x and a y coordinate on the screen as well. So I'm going to um, pass in an x and a y coordinate to this thing. Um, as I'm going about drawing a petal, um, if I'm going to draw it on the screen at some position on the screen, I'm going to go ahead and uh, tell the turtle to pick up the pen. And I'm going to tell it to go to that x and y coordinate on the screen and then to put the pen back down so that I'm ready to draw here. So that kind of gets things started. And then I'm ready to go ahead and, and draw this petal on the screen. And I'm going to do it by drawing a hundred very short uh, lines and connecting them all together. So I'm going to write a 4K in range of 101 so that I go from 0 to, uh, zero to 100 here um, in my loop. This K, let's think of this K as the percentage of the way around the petal as I draw the outside of the petal. So I'm going to take and uh, compute a theta, my angle here, and I'm going to compute it by taking K and uh, dividing by 100.0 to begin with. Um, and that's, I think again, as that, that's my uh, percent there around the outside of the petal. And then I'm going to take that times um, and I'm going to have to decide how many petals do I want if they were non-overlapping petals. And I'm going to take math.pi. If we remember in radians here, radians go from 0 to 2 pi all the way around the circle. If you're going to go all the way around, you've got 0 to 2 pi. So 1 third pi would be 1 third of half of the way around the circle or one sixth of the way around the circle. So the idea here is that I'm going to have a, if I were to draw six petals non-overlapping, uh, my angle that I'm going for here is going to take me, is going to give me those six petals as I go around. So theta here is going to go from zero. Uh, when k is zero, this will be zero. And so it's going to go from zero pi to one third pi. When k is 100, I'll have 100 divided by 100, which is 1, times math.pi divided by 3, which would be one third pi. So it'll go, k, the theta here is going to go from 0 to one third pi. Now, for a petal, the radius is going to change as theta changes. So as theta gets bigger, the radius is going to uh, increase and then decrease um, as I go along. And it turns out that to get theta to increase and then decrease, we can use sine. So if you think of sine, um, sine is the y coordinate. And if we go from, uh, if we were to start over on the right side and go all the way, go all the way around, um, 
around or from zero basically on over to 180, my, my y coordinate increases for the first part and then decreases for the next part. And that's exactly what we want r to do if we're going to, uh, to draw the outside of a circle. We want it to increase for the first part of it, decrease for the second part of it. I'm going to scale it up a little bit by 80 to begin with because I don't want to go just uh, uh, around, I, I don't want my pedal to be a size 1 uh, uh, radius maximum. I want it to have a size of 80 maximum for its radius. Um, and I'm going to do math.sign and then I'm going to do 3 times theta here to uh, compute the the theta that I want. So here's the thing. Theta again is be, is goes between 0 and pi over 3. So 3 times it this is going to go between 0 and pi and if I pass in numbers between 0 and pi to sign, for the first half, from 0 to pi over 2, it's going to increase. Math.sign is going to be increasing. And then from uh, pi over 2 to pi, math.sign is going to decrease. So the radius will start out by increasing, and then it will decrease. And we'll see here in just a moment um, how that works. Now I've got polar coordinates here that I need to convert to um, to my actual x and y coordinates. So my x value that I want to get here is going to be, um, I'm going to call polar uh, to x to convert it, and I'm going to pass in my theta and my r to it to convert it to my actual x value that I want. My y value is going to be uh, polar uh, to y, and again, I'll pass in theta and r to it. Okay, so I'm computing an x and a y value, um, and I want to add that to my x that I was passed in. So I'm going to do x plus xv here and y plus yv so that I draw this pedal relative to the point that I passed in, the xy coordinate that I passed in. Um, so there's nothing to return in this case because this function has a side effect. It goes ahead and draws a pedal on a screen. And, um, and so I'm just going to uh, end the function here. Of course, the function does return none because there's no return statement in it. But I don't really care about that because I'm, I'm not interested in what it returns in this case. Now, to call this, i got to create a turtle. So I'm going to say t equals turtle dot turtle. That creates the turtle. I'm going to create a screen. Screen equals uh, t dot get screen to get the screen object. And then I'm going to go ahead and set my world coordinates, screen.set world coordinates. And I'm just going to go from minus 100, minus 100 to 100, 100. And, uh, and now I am ready to go ahead and draw um, on the screen to draw a petal. So I'm going to call draw petal to go ahead and draw it. I'm just going to say draw it with the turtle, and I'm going to have it initially just draw it at 0, 0 here so we can see. I'll do a screen dot uh, exit on click at the end, and let's go ahead and run this program now and see what it does. And I, it looks like I made a small mistake. So let's see if we can fix that here. Um, I must have made some mistake in here. Let's just see here. Oh, and I forgot. I see what I did. I didn't add y value there. I added x value twice. So here we go, and there we have our outline of our pedal. So the uh, that's our pedal there, and if you look at it, you can kind of see that's about one-third of, or one-sixth of the way around, one-third of the way around, ha halfway around the, uh, the flower here. Okay, so I've got a function here that draws a petal on the screen, and that's useful if I wanted to draw a flower on the screen. So to draw a flower, I'm just going to go ahead and add to this program, and I'm going to write a, a draw flower function. And I'm going to pass this thing in an X and a Y and a turtle so that I can go ahead and draw 
a flower at a particular point on the screen. Um, but I to do this, I'm going to need to draw six of those petals. And it turns out to draw six of those petals around the screen, I'm going to need one more parameter to draw a turtle here, or draw a petal here. I'm going to add in an angle that I'm going to go ahead and draw it. I need to draw six of them again if I'm going to draw this flower correctly. So um, we'll start by doing a, a four um, I in range, and we're going to draw six petals on the screen. And we're going to go ahead and compute our angle. Our angle that we want is going to be equal to, uh, we can do 360 um, divided by 6 here. And that will give us the angle that we want to draw that petal at. So starting out with an angle of 0 and going all the way around uh, the circle. OK. So I want to pass in, uh, I want to call draw petal. And I'm going to tell it to draw it at draw it with the turtle. I'm going to say, do it at this x and y. And I'm going to pass in the angle that I want to draw it at. However, in this case, I want to pass in radians for the angle. So I'm going to say two radians using that two radians function that I wrote up above. And again, this is a, another instance of top down or bottom up design here. So I've got this two radians function. I can go ahead and use that in my, in my program. So I've got two radians, and I'm going to take that angle and convert it to radians. OK. So I'm going to call draw petal six times here. Or, and, uh, and then I want to draw a flower. So I'm going to call this draw flower now to go ahead and call the draw flower function. But I do have one more parameter here, this angle that I need to make use of. And I am going to use that when I am going to call polar to x here. I'm going to add to my theta each time. I'm going to add in the angle that I want to add to this thing as I compute my x and my y, my x value and my y value. So I just add in that angle there, and that will force this pedal to be drawn around the screen. Let's see how well we do. So we have, and it looks like I'm passing in the same angle each time here for some reason. So that wouldn't be exactly what I want here. Let's see. Um, and that was in, and it's this angle, which is, I see what I did here. I want to take I times this 60 degree angle here so that I get different angles each time. The I is the thing that's changing in the loop there so that I can go ahead and draw six petals. So there's one, and there's two, and there's three, and then we have our other three that we're going to draw. And now we have a flower that we're drawing on the screen. So what I've hoped to demonstrate here today is bottom-up design. Um, bottom-up design is a way of looking at a problem by trying to figure out some of the things that we might use eventually in solving this problem and writing a few of those functions. In this case, the two radians, the polar 2x and the polar 2y. Then we started attacking the problem of drawing one petal of a flower. Um, we were able to use the polar to x and the polar to y in uh, solving that problem. And then once we were able to draw a petal, we were able to take that function and go ahead and use that in doing something a little more complex, like drawing a flower on the screen. It's not a perfect it's not that it's not a perfect design uh, methodology. You are not going to start with all of the the little functions that you might write and get all of those perfect right away. Um, you're certainly going to do things iteratively, which means that you're going to uh, or incrementally. Sometimes people say you're going to need to come back and maybe make changes. Like I made changes to draw a petal here by adding an angle to it. But the idea is that if we start with something simple, we can get that simple thing to work. And then we can use that s solution to that simple program in a more complex program. And that's what bottom-up design is all about.